from Frankfurt. This is the AFN Evening News. Good evening. Shots fired across the Korean demilitarized zone this morning, just 30 minutes before Defense Secretary William Cohen visited American troops there. Reports from the region say 10 North Korean soldiers crossed the 38th parallel and entered the DMZ, only to turn back after South Korean troops fired warning shots into the air. The retreating North Koreans returned fire. Nobody was injured. While at the DMZ, Secretary Cohen described the North Korean regime as, quote, decaying and dying. Well, tonight, still no word on whether forces will evacuate Americans from Zaire. Still, Operation Guardian Retrieval continues. Right now, there are more than 3,000 U.S. forces around Zaire. Responsibility for the mission will fall into the hands of the Navy Marine Task Force, which arrived on the USS Nassau last week. The change means good news for personnel from Southern European Task Force, who will soon deploy home. Well, the men flag mission to Benin, Western Africa lasted two weeks. After that, the medical teams had to stop seeing patients and pull out. While they were able to leave their mark on the patients they treated, a whole other group may never know how much the med flag actually helped them. In fact, they're probably glad to see them go. Senior Airman John Somheil explains. It's hard to appreciate. Our part's over. Think of it as music in Sergeant Daniel Harris He's sort of a composer. Not trying to hurt him. Some of them are a little bit feisty, but uh, in general, we're not having no problems out here. Sergeant Harris and the rest of Med Flag 97 have an enormous task. Immunize thousands of children against two diseases, meningitis and yellow fever. Both are common in Benin. Both can be fatal. So the task force set out shooting kids. I just lost a friend right there. After kids. The Joint Medical Task Force gave over 24,000 shots to the children of Benin. And for all their hard work, what thanks do they get? You get a lot of different reactions out here. Some faces, some look at you like they wish they could kill you. But uh, I think they all appreciate it. Are we? Are we? Are we? Although it's hard to fault the kids for being ungrateful. Uh, it hurts pretty bad. It burns when it gets in your arm. Uh, they're pretty young, don't know what's going on. I figure they're pretty scared. Perhaps the worst part of the immunizations is there's two. Your best bet is just to hold on tight and relax. This won't hurt a bit. In no time, the pain starts to go away, and before long, the tears will dry up. It's all over in just a few minutes. But the protection these immunizations bring will stay with the children for years after the last shot is given. In Benin, Western Africa, Senior Airman John Somhail, AFN News. The violent situation that erupted in the Balkans a few years ago came as a surprise to many experts in the former Yugoslavia. In 1994, when Viktor Jakovic opened the U.S. Embassy in Sarajevo, the consensus among political experts was that Yugoslavia, as it existed at that time, would endure. Today, Jakovic is the U.S. ambassador to Slovenia, once the tip of the former Yugoslavia. In a recent interview with 21st KACOM's Gail McCabe, Ambassador Jakovic said no one expected such conflict and chaos in Bosnia-Herzegovina. expected to fall apart in the way that it did. Uh, I, didn't, I don't think I expected Yugoslavia necessarily to dissolve. Um, I don't think anybody in the United States government necessarily predicted that or expected that to happen. Or if it was going to happen, we didn't think it would happen uh, with such violence. But let me say that another way. We thought if Yugoslavia was going to fall apart, that there would be violence. Therefore, we thought it wouldn't fall apart. We thought it would be in the interest of the people here and of the international community that it would not fall apart. Slovenia is just one of several Eastern European countries making the transition from communist rule to independent status. For most, this means learning the lessons of democracy and a free market economy. During the same interview with 21st KACOM's Gail McCabe, Ambassador Jakovic said Slovenia is paving the way and setting the standard for the rest of her neighbors. It's a model uh, of a country that escaped the chaos and the conflict successfully and then built, built a very prosperous uh, society. 
did it through really, uh, I think, liberally uh, reforming the market uh, uh, economy, and did it also by introducing democratic reforms and political pluralism that we like to see in a lot of different countries. And they've done it successfully. A lot of these countries are doing it, or say they're doing it and they're not doing it, or they're doing it and they're not doing it successfully. Uh, in this country, they say they're doing it, they're doing it successfully. And I, was, I would say also that in, in contrast to some of the other countries in the region, the Slovenes seem to not only understand uh, these concepts, but they practice them. U.S. Ambassador to Slovenia, Viktor Jakovic. Well, for the last two nights, we've looked at suicide, who it affects, and who can help. Tonight, we'll look at a military agency trained to deal with emotional problems, mental health services. There's one drawback to seeking mental health, the misconception that it can destroy a service member's career. But as senior airman Jolene Van Beek reports, trouble doesn't arise when you look for help. Trouble results when you don't. People fear if they go to mental health, they'll lose their security clearance or flying status. The fact is, 90% of those who self-refer get their clearances and flying status returned to them once they complete treatment. Those who are commander-referred usually don't. What typically happens is, as you try to avoid seeking help and trying to solve things on your own, what happens is you end up um, creating the kind of problems that you're trying to avoid. And at the point where you finally do get command referred to mental health, or let's say you have a DUI because you start drinking more, at that point there's usually disciplinary things that happen as well. But the most important thing is to make sure you're safe and your work environment is safe. And, and we, we cannot compromise that. And that's the reason we need to, uh, at times, make recommendations for, for pulling clearances and, and such. Doctors say suicidal thoughts are not a sign of mental illness. If you come to the mental health clinic, you're not crazy. That doesn't mean you're crazy. Most of the people that we see...